Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. The Nerf shirt is on once again because today we're covering yet another N-Series blaster. And in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Flex. This is the successor to the Jolt now. The last time Hasbro tried to reinvent the Jolt, they created one of the worst blasters I've ever seen in my entire experience of being a Nerfer. Let's hope that this one is better in some way. So the Flex is a 2024 release out of N-Series, marking it as the smallest blaster in the whole series. This one clocking in at $3 for an individual price, which is unbelievably cheap. That's the same cost as the Jolt, and is actually cheaper than the Ace, and the blaster's like twice the size of the Ace, but I digress. This blaster is meant to be the new smallest little emergency pistol that you can get. So how does this one stack up? Let's find out, starting with the design. The Flex is an acquired taste. I didn't really dig this design back when I first saw this blaster. I thought it just looked super weird and super bland with this obnoxiously round trigger guard for no reason and the giant grip with the tiny top part of the blaster and there's a rail on it for no reason. But it genuinely looks really good. Just like all the other N-Series blasters, the design of this really does fit. And this is actually made super well. You can see the same little circuit board styling. The Nerf logo is kind of punching out of the shell a little bit, and it looks really cool. Like, it's got a little bit of personality to it. And there's lots of tiny little intricate lines and details that this blaster has that you wouldn't really expect Hasbro to put on something this small. But they really did go above and beyond with the design, and it looks great. One very important thing to note here is that the plastic of this blaster feels incredibly good. It is thick and it is solid like there is no creak or anything to this shell it's got quite a bit of heft to it considering its size honestly they did a really good job with the plastic quality and since this blaster is so simplistic the few accents it does have really complement the design mainly being the exposed plunger tube the trigger and the barrel as well as the little orange nerf logo and the white priming handle it's just three simple colors but it really makes an elegant looking shell from both sides might i add even though there's no nerf logo because they're too lazy to paint what about the ergonomics? This blaster just has a main grip being such a tiny pistol and it feels really weird. It doesn't make sense for something this small to have such a big grip, but it's seriously like a primary sized grip. It's massive. It's almost as big as the knockouts grip. In fact, it might actually be the same size as the knockouts grip, just not as wide and it feels really good. The only drawback of the grip is the fact that the back of it is a little bit too flat, especially up here close to the top. So the lemming of your hand kind of has nowhere to go, and it does get a little bit cramping when you use it for an extremely long time. But for the most part, it's not bad at all. My biggest drawback with the grip is the length of the grip. As you can see, my three fingers are kind of barely fitting on the grip. I feel like it could be a little bit longer and be a little bit more comfortable, as well as this kind of chamfered bottom edge right here which sort of acts as a grip guard to keep your fingers from sliding off and getting in the way of the t-pole it's not the worst thing in the world but it definitely could have been improved so how does this blaster work well you take an n-series dart you shove it into the front and it actually goes really far into the barrel might i add so there's no real risk of you scratching off the dart head if you put this thing in a cargo pocket or something extremely important for a blaster like this you pull the t-pole down you aim and you fire once the blaster doesn't have slam fire. It's a T-pole thing and it's single shot. If it did have slam fire, that would be the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. But let's talk about the smoothness of operation. The T-pole is pretty smooth. It could be a little bit better, but for all intents and purposes, it's a pretty good T-pole and it has a nice click when it hits the bottom. It's not actually that hard to pull the T-pole down considering the terrifying power in this blaster. And the trigger, very nice. Though it's really weird because it's just like the original Jolt where only the top of it moves. You can see that it's mounted from the bottom, but it's weirder than the Jolt because it's a much bigger trigger than the Jolt. So if you try and pull the trigger down close to the bottom, it's substantially harder to pull than if you pull the trigger up close to the top. And since the trigger guard is so big, you kind of don't notice it until you're trying to fire the blaster and it's like, why isn't the trigger pulling? And it fires. It's really weird. You really got to get used to just moving your finger up to the top of the trigger guard. It's not the worst thing in the world, but again, kind of a big oversight on Hasbro's part. Side note, but this is the most amazing blaster ever because you can do this. And it is perfectly viable and perfectly legal in Nerf's own eyes to do this. 
to run a, vision, a night vision scope that costs eight times more than the blaster, eight times heavier than the blaster on top of the blaster. There is nothing wrong with this at all. I love that way too much. Let's see this nugget fire. We're gonna be here for a while. Oh, never mind. Hm. Convenient. So what mod potential does this blaster have? Unfortunately, not much unless you're willing to slightly damage the blaster since it is completely clipped together. Yeah, they pulled an alpha strike. They The whole shell is clipped together from left to right. You could probably get a pry tool in considering there is a seam that is sunken into the blaster allowing you to access the internals, but it's still very annoying. Not to mention the bottom of it is also clipped on. Granted, these clips are exposed, but still I would way rather screws than clips. And this blaster doesn't have any screws on it whatsoever. So unfortunately for modders, this probably isn't gonna be as viable an option as something like a Dart Zone Solo or even an original Jolt. But considering this blaster is $3, shoots about 90 FPS, shoots accurately, and has a really good form factor, really good ergonomic setup, and honestly, really good performance, I don't see much reason to avoid this blaster at all. I really like it a lot. Unfortunately, you can't pick this blaster up on its own right now. The only way to get your hands on it at the time of this recording is through the Gear Up Pack. So I will be linking the Gear Up Pack in the description below, and when this blaster does come out independently, I will link the independent blaster in the description below. With that said, if you want to get this blaster, it's in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,